What's up, baby? So guys, so today we got some hot pot. The weather in San Francisco is looking quite gloomy where I'm at in my district. And it's it's foggy per usual. That's the normal weather in San Francisco. But you know what? I thought what better way to brighten up my day and always get some good food and especially one of my favorite all-time meals, hot pot. So this place is called Tasty Pot, ordered here from before on previous mukbang. And my go-to here is always the, the beef hot pot soup right here. And I was kind of thinking about, oh, should I get the Taiwanese one? But I had PTSD from the time I ordered it because it was too spicy for me. I was like, nah, I'm not trying to you know, have a hard time on the toilet later. But I did upgrade it to medium spicy. Usually I get mild, which is not very much spice, obviously. But we'll see how it goes today. Hopefully I don't regret it. And then also we got right here, on my nice two percent. If you guys know these, you can find this probably at your local Korean supermarket. Or yeah, this is Korean chigae, super refreshing. And yeah, let's get into it. I've been undergoing training for a new job. I've been uh, I've applied. I've been going through it lately. And, you know, it's, of course, the training may be a little boring. It's tedious at first. It's just learning uh, stuff like that from the beginning, from scratch. It's always like that, right? And uh, I'm starving right now. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is, oh, this is hitting the spot right here. Oh, yeah, baby. Mm-hmm. And I thought the spice would, I was kind of, I won't lie, I was like getting a little sleepy and a little tired, a little drowsy. And so I thought some, a little spice would wake me up, you know? Mm -hmm. <sighs> Ooh, yeah. Okay, so this past weekend, these past few weekends, I've been going biking with my friend, a couple friends sometimes. And uh, this weekend was probably one of the roughest bike rides I had in a long time. So it's just me and my friend uh, this past Sunday. Usually my other friend tags along too, but he's busy to, he's studying for a CPA exam. So just me and my friend, he asked, do you want to go biking? And say, yeah, and then let's go to Chris Fields. And if you know in San Francisco, if you're, that's a really good tourist de destination for sure. And, you know, during the coronavirus, I thought while well, biking along Christie Field, it was nice weather, very nice weather at that time. Compared to here where I'm at, it's uh, the sun's not hitting over here. But anyways, I thought, you know, dang, this place looks like Florida over here. There's so many people. There's a lot of people out and about, you know, jogging, you know, having nice walks, walking their dog. And... I don't know if social distancing was uh, really prevalent in these areas, but nonetheless, it was a nice day out um, to get some a breath of fresh air. Going to Crispy Fields, there was like one big hill that we hit. It wasn't too bad, but on the way back, that was a struggle because the wind was on the way back. We we're going against the wind. And, which was tiring us out before we hit like these really big hills um right before the Christie fields going back on the way home it was super rough honestly my we took one break because of my weak ass i won't lie but my friend he probably could i think he probably could have done it without taking any breaks but if i if i didn't have my friend there pushing you pushing me along the side i saw him put you know just working harder or just as hard as me then I probably would have taken more breaks. But that's why, you know, for certain ex like exercising and stuff like that, it's kind of nice to have a workout partner with you, right? So that you guys can push each other. But my homie, he always brings these uh, candies with him. I I'm going to bring some of his candies that he likes too next time. I keep on forgetting. He always brings these candies. I would, I can't imagine 
making it through our bike rides without his candies. He he comes in clutch. He, he usually brings horrible Coca Cola candies. Hits a spot, you know, when you thought you were defeated, taking a little break, you're juiced up again, has some sugar in your system, you're ready to go. And then he also brought some sour gummies as well, sour the worm ones especially. My gosh, those those were hidden. <laughs> Gosh, this hot pot is killing it right now. I'm starving too. But yeah, definitely during this pandemic, right? Piking is more uh, popular, right? Are people trying to get some exercise. The gyms, I think, are I think some may be open, but they're probably going to close down soon. At least where I'm at. No, I can't say much for the people in Florida. They really not don't care about you know the coronavirus at all. But in San Francisco, and they, I'm not sure about the other parts of the Bay Area, um, San Francisco, everyone is abide, abiding by the rules for the most part. There's only there's probably a select few people that don't wear masks, but uh, the majority of the people do here. So that's good to see. And while biking, I saw a lot of people wear masks as well. I don't know why people don't listen. If if we actually listen and follow to the rules, well, that's against human nature, right? You know, I'm sure things will open up more faster, right? But of course, the vaccine um, needs to come out for uh, everyone to start really going out again, right? Okay, sorry everyone. So actually, you know, I ate a lot of food. I was super hungry. I was trying to get some grub in before we talk about today's topic. So today we'll be talking about Gotta High School Episode 6. And on the opening sequences of this episode, we finally see Jin Tae Jin, who is Jin's grandfather. And he's confronted by this cult called the Knox. Now, I was... I misinterpreted what I've seen from other episodes since, you know, I thought Park New Jin, he looks like an evil character, but they're actually not part of the same faction. So they have, they're unrelated to each other and Park New Jin isn't a part of this underground cult of some sort. Now, there have been some changes in the national tournament that's coming up due to, you know, the commissioners knowing that this Knox group will be interfering in the tournament and they will be participating as well. So instead of having one individual participate from each of the preliminaries in each Korean you know, district or, the, or each Korean region, uh, the, the top three fighters of each area will be able to participate as a team. So now Han and Jin are a shoe in for the Seoul uh, region. But now, Mira is pitted up against the Brazilian jiu-jitsu user that Jin formerly faced. And it was an easy piece of pie for her. She, now she's the third participant in the upcoming tournament. Now, the Knox group leader, can we go back to Jin Tae Jin and his Knox leader of, of some sort? If you appears to be, he's offering Jin Tae Jin, will you join hands with us? And obviously... Jin Tae Jin declines his offer. Now a whole great battle goes on. They kind of they didn't really have many fight sequences. They didn't have any fight sequences. They kind of skipped to the end. But Jin Tae Jin has defeated many of the witches cult members. And then the leader kind of reveals something very important. He said, "Our God has yet to descend," and you know he I don't know, he he conjures up some power, and a big freaking sword comes out of the sky, and then there's some. You know lettering on the sword as well and this cult leader is you know using this huge sword to try to destroy Jin Tae Jin of some sort but of course he's not gonna be easily that defeated 
Jin Tejun is a monster on his own as well. Okay, quick sip right here. Okay, now, um, Mira, you know, is having a little stroll in the park, and she comes across a uh, Jim Bong Su, I believe his name. Bing, uh, I believe yes, and he's. Um, sports announcer for the God of High School tournament that we've been seeing, the eccentric dude with his glasses. It kind of looks, my, his glasses remind me of Kami, Kamina from Gurren Magan, legendary series, one of all my, my all time favorite series. Go check it out if you haven't. But he, he says that um, it seems that something is troubling you a little bit. And you know, you're not really drawing, you're not using the real power of the Moonlight Sword style. and it kind of goes a little cheesy down there. He says, you're not putting your feelings into the sword and stuff like that. He goes on this whole spiel. And he said that he, he's actually blind and he was blinded by moon, by the by the moonlight style specifically, which is, is kind of funny, actually. But then now we transition over to uh, Han Dehui talking to Park Min Jun 101. And Park Min Jun says that, do you, you get, since you know our deal is null and void, your friend didn't make it, uh, do you really have any will to participate in the upcoming tournament? And <clears throat> Han's thinking like, you know, I have a big debt to pay to my friend. Uh, you, he would probably kick my butt coming out from the grave if you know, I didn't give it my all. And you know, since he has new friends now, he, he thought he owes them as well for doing them dirty in the recent episodes, right? As you've seen. Then, but there's one question that has been bothering Han in the back of his mind and he finally manages to have the courage to ask Park Mi Jin. So pretty much, you know, he everyone's noticed that, you know, the commissioner, you know, they use those unknown powers of some sort. And he's asking there what what are these powers behind this tournament? And Park Mi Jin goes to explaining that these powers are known as the Char Yu Sok. And, you know, it's obviously these powers are supernatural and these individuals get these powers from these beings like demons, gods, you know, all that sort. And he says that in the upcoming tournament, or in the nationals at least, the people that you'll be facing up against, all, pretty much all of them will have these powers. So hopefully, you know, Jin hasn't awakened to his powers yet. At least his body was able to take it. But of course... All, if you're uh, Han and Yumira won't be put at a big disadvantage you know, since they you know, have these other extra, uh, supernatural powers of some sort. So of course, you know, I'm kind of foreshadowing that Yumira and Han will actually eat one of these fruits from Park Mi Jin and you know, gain some powers too as well. So we, we'll see how the story develops later along those lines. So. Let's get some more tea. I don't want the food to get cold, so let's get into it, baby. As you can see here, I ate a lot of the food already, but it's because I was super hungry. I didn't want to talk too much. But I was saying, like, you know, biking with my friend this past weekend, you know, at the end of the day, I, usually I feel the effects of my thighs burning, of course, during biking as well. But usually I really feel it the day after. But I didn't, on Sunday, it was not the day after. It was the day of that I was, you know, I was feeling it. Walking up the stairs, you know, you know I was, was, like, struggling. I had to hold on to the handrail. And then I was joking with my friend. I sent him a picture of Joe Swanson from Family Guy to, um, to show him that's how I'm feeling. I'm pretty much like handicapped. You know, my legs are, um, not, my ha lower half of my body is pretty much dead. That was kind of fucked up, but you know. <laughs> and yes, after, okay. I'm not, I, I look forward to my, you know, bicycle dates, no homo, I right, pause. Uh, with my friend because you know, after every bike ride or my homies we go to uh, get some milk tea or some nice refreshment of some sort um, 
on Irving Street, particularly. And there's tons of bubble shops over there. And we get a nice refreshment. You know, it's like a little old cool down and a little reward that we look forward to after a nice long bike ride. Usually, man, these bike rides we've been going on these past few weekends, it's been about at least uh, three hours at least minimum. Um, maybe a little over three hours. I think Christy Fields was a little over three. And <clears throat> I think Christy Fields was like around a little over 20 miles. 20 mile bike ride, which is good, get a good workout in. And then also with our milk tea, usually, you know, we're boys, we kind of want a little uh, something to eat as well. We get, we've been lately getting this popcorn chicken. So me and my, you know, high school friends back in the day, we would always get, um, you know, a snack to eat after school, especially on Tuesdays, because near my high school, there, if you know, there's Popeye's Tuesdays, right? You get the Popeye's Tuesdays, baby, all right? And then right after, best believe, you get some milk tea right after. But the milk tea place that we only had near Popeye's was only Quickly's. But now it is, but now, oh man, I can't imagine if I was a high school student. I am probably going to get more boba back in the day too. There's, at that Quickly's, it's, I think it's now a, it's a boba guys now. So uh, boba guys is uh, very good too. If you guys have a chance to visit the barrier, try out try out Bobo Guys. Uh, they're known for their strawberry horchata. Uh, a lot of you know, I'm sure if you're into boba, you probably heard about this place. And you know, girls love taking pictures of food and boba and whatnot. But the strawberry horchata is very aesthetic, I would have to say. It has like three layers. You know, there's like of each uh in the boba. There's like the red layer for strawberries, and matcha, the green, it's like super colorful. And, you know, of course, all the girls would go crazy for it. But then again, I go crazy for it, too. <laughs> yeah. I, you know what? I do have a sweet tooth once in a while. Before, I didn't really have one. Like, the only things that I like that are sweet that I kind of like are I really have ice cream, obviously. Who doesn't like ice cream? Cake? Yeah, it's whatever. Unless, like, you know, it's like a really bomb cake. Like, you have every once in a while for a special occasion, like, someone's birthday or a celebration of some sort but you know boba does me in sweet drinks like oh man so so bad but not so good <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah Okay, now I forgot to mention that Park Mew Jin, he's one of these six individuals who are very strong, from what I assume. And this is like an introduction of these characters. So while editing my video for my reaction video, you can check out my Patreon. I have to write these down. There's no way I want to memorize these guys um, watching it the first time. So here it goes. So we got Jon Jae San, he's known as the Great Magician. We got Seo Hao Yang. He's known as the Hulk. And then we got Kim Do Sheik. He's a lone shark. And then we got Na Bong Chim. Uh, he's the sixth divine doctor. And he's actually Park Mu Jin's uh, former teacher. And uh, Park Mu Jin said, Would you take Jin as your student? And he eventually agrees. He actually encountered uh, Jin the other day to see himself, to see for himself with his own eyes. Who and Jin as a, is as a person. And then we also got Kim Unjia Jin Yeo. Oh my gosh, I'm butchering these names. I'm sorry, forgive me. Uh, she's known as the Six Rebirth. And then we also got Park Mew Jin, and he's known as the Tyrika. And he summoned these six individuals, probably uh, forwarding uh, their plan in stopping this underground cult called Nox, as I mentioned before. Oh, excuse me. Alright, so toward the end of this episode, um, they introduce all the regions of Korea, the best of the best fighters from each area. And I thought, you know, Park, uh, Jin, Yumi Ra, and Han would fight, you know, toward like later on, but, you know, it's, it's due to my surprise, right from the get go, their first fight is Dum versus the North Chuncheong province, I believe. So that should be interesting. Hopefully, next episode. We can get some action right there, right? And then 
Oh yes, I forgot. Oh, I forgot to mention. So the Knox organization has been making the news already. Um, before the announcer, right? The guy I forgot his name already, but um, the original announcer for the tournament, he's replaced by someone else because they're he was murdered by one of these Knox members, and then at the end of the episode, the same guy who killed the announcer dude, he killed Q, who I believe was the announcer that. Jin had to face off against in the earlier episode, and he was killed by the same dude as I mentioned before. So um, we're not quite sure what the intentions are of the Knox organization. So we'll see how you know the season progresses. But anyways, thank you for watching. Hope you guys are doing well out there. Peace.